everybody. Welcome to, yeah, that's right, another edition of The Wrap Up. Dan Myers, Nick Buckler, with you, well, as always. Uh, Dan, we're celebrating a, uh, a milestone today, uh, and yet we're going to get sappy. Uh, this one's me and you. Yeah. Uh, Dan, happy third anniversary. Three years ago today, we walked into school, and I was like, nah, I need to sit by somebody that looks <laughs> like I can learn from. Well, Dan, I chose you. <laughs> and three years later, here we are, sitting next to each other. At the same on desk. the 70th edition of the wrap-up, Dan. It's been a pleasure each and every been. day of the, th oh, nah, man, we're getting, uh, we're getting a little sappy here. Yep. Dan, uh, three years ago today, 2013. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. Time really flies. Take a flies. moment of silence to remember the good times we had. Alpha Sigma Specs, keeping mm. it fresh. Uh, but anyways. We got some business to cover, <laughs> and that's college football, Dan. Uh, Michigan teams were in action, and da 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 da. <laughs> See this color scheme? Very nice. Go blue. Very nice. Uh, Sixty-three to three, the Wolverines defeat the Hawaii Rainbow, whatever the heck team, whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, sixty-three to three, the Rainbow Warriors go down <laughs> to the Michigan Wolverines at the Big House. A lot of good things in that game. Uh, I'm going to start with their defense. Uh, the coach uh, of Hawaii said that was the best defense he has ever coached against. And, I mean, they had negative yards in the first half. Uh, and it wasn't until they spread the field a little bit did they get yardage against the backup defense. So a lot of good things to look forward to in this Michigan defense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just promising in every direction, uh, you know, defense offense. Uh, but, you know, the defense was strong. You could tell. I mean, look how many points did they get at the end of the game. Was it three? And that was just... That was it. They it was definitely, a fifty-five yard field goal. Yeah, that was, and that was lucky in itself. But uh, you know, it was a terrific game to watch. It was just you know the big house was packed Saturday night or Saturday at noon. You had uh, Derek Jeter and the king himself of Jumpman, Michael Jordan in attendance, and uh, it was it was I was so excited. I woke up that morning, had game day on. It just felt surreal. Uh, it was just great to have college football back, and it's rolling, and it, we're going. We are going. The night before, though, Michigan State took the field against Furman. And uh, that game did not go as planned for the Spartans. They have to get a late touchdown to put this game away, 28-13. to And, uh, well, maybe not how they wanted to start the season. Weren't even close to covering the spread, which was 41.5 points. 28-13 win. Tyler O'Connor played all right at quarterback, but just a lot of sloppiness from this Michigan State team. And uh, going ahead, they'll play Notre Dame in a couple weeks. This game could be ugly. Michigan State really disappointing in their first week. Yeah, and they really were. And but you know, I think it gives Michigan fans a little more momentum, a little more trash talking that you know to throw out there, whether it'll be the forum, social media, or whatever. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it, just the first week. You know, by you know four weeks from now, we'll forget it all happened. Uh, they're they're a tough team. They got a, a pretty good coach, and uh, I don't think they have anything to worry about. We'll see though. Yeah, we we definitely will. Uh, Michigan State fans, the thing about them. Is uh, I, I mean, how many times can you share a video from last October? <laughs> I see that on my newsfeed like every day. Let it go. Uh, Michigan will beat them this year, but they'll like, hey, remember that block punt last year? Ha <laughs> ha That was so gnarly, bro. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you something, Sparty. Newsflash, your little brother. And you're acting like a little brother. Oh, that, remember that one time when I beat my big brother at kickball? <laughs> that was so funny. I was beating him. He was beating me, and then I beat him at the end because he's an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this is like. You're like that little brother that's like <laughs> needs his riddle. Calm down, Jimmy. Calm down. <laughs> Bouncing off the walls. You know, hey, go sit in the corner of a round room. Okay. <laughs> it's like he's gnawing on your hand with his buck teeth, eating sugar cane right off the freaking leaf. I mean, let's be honest, Dan. These people are the worst. The worst. And I can't wait until Michigan goes into Spartan Stadium and mops the floor with these Ritalin eating, <laughs> sugar cane swallowing people. All right, I can't wait. It's gonna be so good. And let me tell you something, I'm in the minority. All my friends either went to state or love state because they're products of the generation. I'm. The people my age love state because they are good at the time that they're into college sports. Rightfully so. But me, I'm brought up my roots. Maze, blue, hail, yes, <laughs> let's go, blue. You know? Yeah. 
see a little cheerleader coming there you go land. <laughs> ladies yeah. uh it's pathetic to me yeah hey sure hey let retweet this to ruin a michigan fan's day it's not ruining anything except your chance of getting a career <laughs> all right you're sitting home on facebook ha, 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 i ruined their lives ha. oh that's funny you're spoon fed off mom and dad in your basement Ma, me love. Oh, okay, that's fine. How old are you? Oh, 40? Oh, okay, you must have went to state. Dan? <laughs> With that being said, and I, I love the Spartan voice, I think we're going to hear a lot more of that as things come, as, uh, especially the... <laughs> but with that being said, there was, uh, you know, I heard talks of, you know, is, is this rivalry still alive? I mean, there's a lot of people are saying that Spartan, you know, Sparty doesn't look at the Wolverines as a rivalry as much They're as they pathetic, do anymore. Dan. I'm cutting you off right there. They're pathetic. Every Spartan fans are the ones arguing two years ago. Ohio State's not Michigan's number one rival. We are. <laughs> oh, is that so? That's funny. Look at any rivalry chart and anyone's list. It's Michigan, Ohio State, no matter what the sport is. It's Bo versus Woody. It's all this. It's not uh, uh, Izzo against Amaker. <laughs> no, it's not. And now they're like, oh, we don't even look at Michigan as a rival. We're too good for those idiots. Oh, that's funny. So is that going to be the excuse this year when Michigan comes into your building and beats you by four touchdowns? Is that, oh, well, they're not even a rival. It's just a loss. They haven't beat us in years. Oh, it's been two. And look at the all-time record. And uh, when was your last national championship, Dan? Uh, oh, uh, never. Okay. Uh, no, there was one many, many, many moons ago. I think great, great, great Grandpa Ernest was around for that <laughs> one. Uh, Michigan, oh, Michigan hasn't won anything. Oh, 97. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, college quarterbacks. Let's. Uh, oh, none of the good ones came from state. Kirk Cousins. Oh, you like that? Yeah, I do. You're terrible. <laughs> uh, Brian Hoyer, you could argue him. His QBR was less than my IQ, and that's pretty bad. Uh, Tom Brady, the GOAT? Oh, okay, yeah, Michigan, that's where he went. Natty Champ, 97. D need I continue? I'm starting to break I, a sweat in, you, for this pettiness. I don't, I don't get it. Dan, I interrupted you. You are talking about Michigan not being a rival of Michigan State, and then I just went on a, a little bit of rage that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I apologize. Well, what mo more can you say after that? Continue um, on. I thought it was pretty... Pretty interesting considering the source that yes, it was you know uh, Michigan State fan that brought up the discussion, but uh, it, it made you think about it. But you know clearly that's always going to be there. You always got them right next door, um, and yeah, I think it's always going to be there. And I just I thought it was an interesting question to to pose, and I I, I think it's always going to be there. But I heard a lot of people saying that it's not. But uh, in my opinion, I think it is. These people were probably blackout drunk at Rick's, okay? Because <laughs> that's what you do in East Lansing. You're Shout just out. so upset that you can't get into a real school. Mind you, I didn't go to any university, so <laughs> that's why I'm saying this. Because I'd join you, Spartan fans. I'd be right there with you. Uh, d uh, Western, let's move on to rowing the boat, because that's what they did at Northwestern. Winning, PJ Flex got that team playing well. Row the boat, 22-21 over Northwestern. Burn the city down, folks. That's what happened in KZU over the weekend. 1-0, leading the MAC. P.J. Fleck is rowing the boat, Dan Western. Congratulations. That's a huge win. That is really big. Um, as far as their team's concerned, I'm not too uh, up to date with them, uh, but it sounds like well, that was a terrific Central win. Well, Central won as well. They were firing up. Yeah. 49-3, to three, but they also played Children of the Blind. <laughs> uh, Presbyterian. Didn't even know they had a football team. I think they were the asking hospital. Madden the whole time. Uh, what, what should we do here? X, okay. Who's <laughs> w, just on the bag, WR81 was the leading receiver in that game. Uh, he had one catch for a negative three yards. Uh, yeah, Central wins. Eastern rolls over, uh, I think they played Howard. So Jimmy Howard losing his first college football game uh, to Eastern. So look at that. All the Michigan schools win. University of Phoenix online picked up a big <laughs> win. Uh, they beat Macomb Community College in a nail-biter. Uh, 3.14 repeating. Zero. So it was pie all over the place. Uh, moving on, Dan, to a new segment. We're going to start picking some games. Because why not? That's right. Earl's wondering who, who we got winning this week. Earl, let me tell you something. You want to listen to me because I was listening to a local flagship. Now, hey, now we can say their name because there's only one sports station around. Uh, 97 won the ticket. And I picked along with who they picked with the spread in their games. And uh, let's just say, oh, yeah, I went 8-0. Florida State scared me last night, but then they woke up in the second half to mop the floor with Ole Miss. 
When you only play 30 minutes in a game, you're not going to win. Uh, so we got six games we're going to break down. First game with the spread, mind you. Uh, Michigan at home. They're favored by uh, 36 points against Central Florida. Dan, who do you got? Yeah, I've got Michigan. Michigan yeah, covering definitely. the spread easy. Yeah. As do I. Uh, you can make that spread minus 100 and Michigan would still cover. <laughs> uh, Central travels to Oklahoma State to play the Cowboys. Oklahoma State is giving them three touchdowns. Dan? Uh, I'm not too familiar with uh, CMU, but I... Cooper Rush, yeah. a quarterback. Let's go with... Uh, I'm going to go with o Oklahoma State. As am I. Sure. At home, I think they'll cover. Yeah. Uh, let's move on. Florida at home against Kentucky. Florida's favorite 16 points. Dan, who you got? Uh, I want to go with Florida all day. As definitely. This. Kentucky is just in a tailspin. Uh, I got Florida covering the spread as well there. Arkansas travels to Texas Christian TCU. The Horn Frogs. Horn Frogs favored seven and a half. I love the Horn Frogs. I'm taking them in this game. Are too. you nice? Yeah, I've, I got go. 13 in the land. Got to go with our Arkansas for oh, sure. Oh, the Razorbacks. Yeah. <laughs> There's the Southern teams. Difference. They love their football down there. So we'll see how that TCU goes. TCU is also Southern. Yeah. And yeah. they're Christian. That's true. So. You gonna but change your mind? No, no, All we're, right, we're gonna stay There's with our that. first difference, Dan, so mm -hmm. there we go. Winner gets uh, something from the loser, not sure what it is yet. Not we'll material value, though, of course. You're right, because <laughs> here at the wrap up, we play by the rules. <laughs> Tennessee Volunteers at home, <laughs> favored by 11. Virginia Tech comes to town. The Hokies, I got the Volunteers covering number nine in the country, Dan. I got, I wanna take the hoax. I oh, wanna take the Brady Hokies. Hoax. The Brady's. Yeah. All right, Dan. Now there's two difference. The last one, Shoot Arizona the State, the party school favored by three. Texas Tech coming off a big win against UCLA coming to town. I got Texas Tech plus three in that game. Coming off a big win. They will cover. They will win straight up in this game. And I think they go to 2-0, oh, Dan. Yeah, absolutely. You got to take Texas Tech all day. There we go, sure. Dan. We, those are our picks. Send us yours at thewrapup.com. That's not a real website. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I'm going to go try to get the uh, the copyright dealt out and try to make that a website. We'll be right back. If ever there's a reason to be swept up in the season of the actually didn't get the website name, so uh, you can just <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> no, probably not. But uh, we got Lions to talk about. They start up this weekend at the Colts, 425. This week uh, could be a disappointing season. They made some cuts after the preseason. Thursday, Jake Rudock gets the start at quarterback in his last chance to impress Bob Quinn, Jim Caldwell, and the Lions. Must have fell short. I thought he played good enough to win or to get that job. They did win 31 nothing against the Bills. Uh, scrub versus scrub. Uh, Jay Rudock was cut and then now waived and then came back, cleared waivers, now the practice squad quarterback. Still be learning from Dan Orlovsky and Matthew Stafford. Orlovsky is the backup quarterback and uh, a lot of people aren't happy, Dan. I'm not. I like Jay Rudock. I mean, he set a record last year in Michigan, pro style quarterback, can move a little bit, and I thought he really controlled that game Thursday against the Bills. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. How long has been uh, Orlovsky been in the league? What, 11 400 years. Season? Yeah. He's prehistoric. It's we've, we, we've invested enough with one, you know, giving somebody multiple chances uh, with that being Matthew Stafford, which, yes, he has, you know, proven himself at time, but you, you got to start investing, you know, and somebody like Jake Rudock, you, you got to stick with them um, and just knock them off. I mean, you, you did that with other quarterbacks who are now starting for that team, but... It's a different story. So, you know, I thought that it would be better to invest in them. Um, I was just as shocked as a lot of people were, and uh, that's unfortunate that they let, him, they let him go like that. But the good thing is he's still with the organization. He's still in the practice squad. 
Uh, and should something, hopefully, I mean, what happened to Dan Orlovsky, <laughs> Jake Rudock would step in and be the backup quarterback for that team, and I think he's very capable of doing that. Another surprise cut was TJ Jones, the uh, flashy receiver, was drafted just two years ago. Uh, he was cut as well, uh, waived now on the practice squad. So when I say cut, I mean waived. You are not on the 53-man roster, but you are put on the practice squad. George Wynn also went to the practice squad, uh, as well as the guard, Brandon, whatever, who cares, <laughs> uh, that they traded Andre Roberts for to San Francisco and got. Then they waived him, and now he's back on the practice squad as well. Uh, those are really the only notables that went down to the practice squad. TJ Jones, though, flashy, can return kicks. Good hands, quick, uh, not on the team. So it's a wonder who's going to be on this uh, receiving core. Uh, obviously, you have Marvin Jones, Golden Tate, and, uh, Ebron's supposed to be back for the regular season, uh, and after that, it gets kind of kind of hairy. Yeah. Uh, they released Jeremy Curley. Well, they don't have him. They signed him in the off season, who had some time with the Jets uh, and actually flourished for a couple seasons, but now it's uh, who's going to step up? Not sure, but you never know. Let's predict the Lions this week at Colts. Who do you got? Yeah, I, 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 I want to take the Colts. I'm not feeling, and I'm not feeling the confidence that I thought I would be feeling by now. Um, especially with the cutting of the team, I, I'm not feeling it. So I, I definitely want to go with the Colts. I wish I could go with the Colts, but guess what? I'm going forward down the field with the Lions. I'm taking them this week. Colts are depleted. Andrew Luck's got to come back into full form. Don't think he'll quite get there. Uh, look at his receivers. They're not good. T. Y. Hilton's aging. Dante Moncrief's forced to be your number one. You got Philip Dorsett uh, and your uh, tight end Dwayne Allen. That guy gets hurt every time the wind changes direction. Uh, <laughs> I like the Lions in this matchup, but I don't like them to make the playoffs. I think they'll be third now. I think the Vikings adding Sam Bradford this week after the injury to Teddy Bridgewater puts them ahead of the Lions now into second place in this division. And uh, I think, still think the Bears are the worst team in the NFL. <laughs> so I think the Lions will finish third in the division roughly seven and nine eight and eight uh, but i do think they get the job done this weekend in indy on the road matthew stafford big game because i have to start him this week on our free for fun fantasy league here at the office where i'm taking on the football guys yep he's right over there uh, i got him <laughs> art i'm coming for you uh, i gotta take you down this week hopefully now because i'm running my mouth i'll probably lose big but took tom brady so he's suspended got stafford stepping in probably 500 yards and six touchdowns but who knows? Who I knows? Uh, got the Lions this week. You got the Colts. The World Cup of Hockey, though, right around the corner. Camps have begun. What What do you expect to see from this new uh, new tournament? Really, it's it'll be interesting. It's going to be great to have hockey back so soon. Uh, I'm not really, you know, I love watching hockey anytime. So there's, you know, I'm sort of torn at this. Uh, I I love seeing, you know, Tonight hockey. <laughs> Or what's that Alanis Morissette torn? Is that a, no? It's no, a, Natalie Imbruglia. Yeah, her. That's, How's it go? Give me a look. I can't. Uh, maybe I have some soda. That's it. This is how I feel. I'm going By request. Lying <laughs> on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Uh, but I am torn. I do like seeing you know hockey being back, especially when you got your pros. But then I don't like seeing. I don't like seeing our wings out there per se. Well, um, luckily for you, two of them got injured and yes. won't be playing on Team Sweden. Yeah, and I think it's just it's more of a, more of an issue that they have to worry about. I mean, the three of them actually. Glenn Denning's not playing either. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So that rests <laughs> that problem. But uh, you know, I, I like I said, I love seeing hockey, but it's just I feel like it's just it's unnecessary. more unnecessary, yeah. and it's just more of a chance of somebody getting hurt, uh, especially with the Wings as of the past five years. It and seems we all like know. the Wings get hurt all the time. That's true. So, I mean, but it, it will be entertaining. I love, the, I love seeing this. Um, you know, I, like I said, I kind of bummed Zetterberg's not going to play for Sweden. But then again, neither he is Cronwall. Uh, Glenn Denning out. So now you have uh, Abdelkader for Team USA. You have Dylan Larkin for Team North America U23. Uh, am I missing someone? Uh, is Marchenko playing for Team Russia? Or no? I think he is. Ugh. I want to say he is. That's a rough. But the, and on the on the bright side though, we'll get that rust off. Not that these hockey players There's are ever rusty. There's definitely going to be some rust on Alexei Marchenko. I think there was all last year. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that was his excuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let let's take a selection. Who do you got winning the World Cup? Uh, Canada's a big favorite, I know, in the odds department. But are you going to pick them? No, I, I don't want to go with them because I feel like that's just giving them more notoriety. No, I want I want to go with Sweden. 
Uh, I, li I like Ooh. Sweden. All right. I was going to take Sweden, but guess what? I'm changing. I'm going to go off the grid and take North America U23 to win this thing. I ho yeah, that'd be great. That lineup is stupid. You've got Dylan Larkin on the line with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Austin Matthews. You've also got Jack Eichel. You've got Connor McDavid. You've got Brandon Saad. You've got Nathan McKinnon. I mean, this team is loaded. The only weakness or question is goaltending. Uh, not many young goalies tearing up the league uh, from North America. I think Michael Condon might be their goaltender. Uh, he was with uh, Min or Montreal last year. Uh, but that lineup is just lethal. Canada is going to be good. Sweden's going to be good. I don't think Team USA is going to fare too well. They've just been behind the eight ball of late. Uh, Canada's just so good. Sweden, I think, to me, reminds me a lot of the Red Wings because half their team is Red Wings. Uh, old and kind of slow. They've lost their luster. People are on to the European style of hockey. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't rule out the Russians. Pavel Datsuk. I mean, that whole team is pretty much his KHL team. Yeah. Kovalchuk, Datsuk. Uh, Slava Voinov, but now not to mention you're adding Alexander Ovechkin and uh, Maxim Kuznetsov. I mean, the team just gets a lot stronger when you add these NHL guys in. Russia could be a force as well, but I'm going off the grid with North America U23 to right. take the cake, Dan. But we're both probably going to be wrong. It's probably going to be Canada. Yeah, right. <laughs> Unfortunately. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, let's talk Tigs for a minute. They have found themselves right in the thick of a wild card, and not to mention division race, and they've been playing good baseball because of who? Justin Upton. Who would have thunk? In his last 15 games, Justin Upton has hit nine home runs, 23 RBIs, including a big one on Labor Day in the 11th inning off Beck, a three-run shot, and then the day before, he hit in the eighth inning a solo shot to give both times that ended up being the game-winning shots of that each game, respectively, Justin Upton's been hitting 381 in his last 14 games with eight, nine home runs. Uh, this guy is a machine at this time, and his power now coming somewhere where it normally doesn't come from for him, right center field. Yep. Normally, uh, when he's on, his swing is one of the most beautiful in the game, but when he's off, he looks stupid. It reminded me a lot of Alex Avila, the swing. Mind you, Avila hit two home runs in the last two series against us, including one on Labor Day. Verlander versus Sale was a good matchup. 11 Ks for JV over seven innings. Tigers tied for that second wild card with the Baltimore Orioles. We'll welcome them to the comfy confines of Comerica Park this weekend. That's going to be a big series. Only one game behind the White, uh, Red Sox, rather, in the wild card to the, for the top wild card, which would give you home field in that play in game. But not to mention, only four and a half games out from the Cleveland Indians who they have seven games remaining with this year. Those are going to be big games. This is going to be a fun uh, month of September and first week of October to see how this plays out. I think the Tigers are going to find themselves in the postseason after a lot of back and forth, back and forth streakiness. They're hot and they've been hot for about a month now. And it, it's a sign of good things to come for this team. Although I'm still not aboard the Osmus bandwagon, I think with a more consistent manager, this team definitely is in first place in the division. Yeah, and, and they're, they're firing up in that redemption time. And, and it's about time, you know, as far as going to Justin up to, that's what I'm referring to as, you know, redeeming yourself. That's huge. If they can stay hot at the end of the season, we're going to have some great baseball to tune into. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, we, like you said, with the streakiness over the season that, uh, unfortunately, you know, it's, here we are, the down to the wire again. But as a Tiger fans, what did you expect towards the end of the season? Um, as long as everyone can stay healthy, and continue this huge rush of just momentum. Um, keep that rolling into the postseason, and we may have some uh, some great November ball, hopefully. We'll see. Let's hope so. We'll see who steps up when it comes time to, yeah, that's right, step up. Upton's going to have to stay hot. K-Rod, Francisco Rodriguez, the Tigers' closer, moves into fourth all-time by himself yesterday with his 425th career save, and it was a good one. He did give up a run in the process, but still slammed the door. That was his 39th save of the season, only blown three opportunities. Good for him, good for the Tigers. Uh, let's hope for a big, big, fun, long playoff run. Now to the final segment of the show. It's a new one that we're gonna call uh, Riding the Pony. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. You heard it right. Uh, Western Michigan women's soccer. You know I have some invested interest in this team. Well, that's right. This is my family happening. Uh, my uncle is the celebrate. He celebrates every goal the way you're about to see right here 
every time they score a goal. Yeah, that's right. A new this season. It's a uh, yeah, a horse's head on a stick, meant to be a bronco, and he always home or away. This happens, waves the flag in the home team's fans, upsets a lot of people. <laughs> it's awesome if you get the chance to make it out. Maybe you'll see a fight. Who knows? It's really good stuff. Uh, they get the win against Western Illinois in that game, two to nothing. Beat Oakland on Friday, one nothing. Uh, and they went down to Bloomington, Indiana, and got the win against the Hoosiers. The team's for real, folks. Keep an eye out to the west side and row that boat, folks. That's Congratulations. Right. We will rain. We will, Dan. There we go. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to go run through and dance in the rain all the way to the local fast food establishments because why not? We're not healthy here. here. <laughs> we're in America, you know? Dan Myers, Nick Buckler, saying, bop, 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 peace. Oh.